Hey ladies, do you want your man to have no respect for you? I think if you're in a serious relationship with a girl, she should not have an Instagram, that's cheating. Tired of having agency in your own life? Today we call that allowing women to vote. I told you about how diabolical that is, even though people take it for granted. Come on over to findyouralpha.com right now. Our premium men are waiting for your call, but they're not gonna listen. So I learned that women are loyal to the they want to suck and nothing else. And if they're not having sex with you, they're gonna have sex with somebody else. Come get a real man. I haven't been in a relationship in my life and had fellas. If you want to join, it's on 10,000 girls. Show these women the real eyes. I want to be like those guys. I mean, not really, but it must be like that. Welcome back to the channel. How are you getting on? And if you're new here, subscribe to the channel. Did you see what I did there? I asserted my dominance as the alpha male, and now you feel compelled to subscribe. And if you don't, that's kind of the whole point of this video. If you're new to the internet, you might not have heard of the term alpha male before. So just in case, here's a brief history just before we get started. The terms alpha and beta come from animal ethology, or just the study of animal behaviour. They specifically refer to the observation that in some animal societies, chimpanzees for example, the stronger alpha males tend to win more fights and therefore get more food and more sex than the weaker beta males. It was specifically observed in the 1982 book Chimpanzee Politics by Dutch primatologist Franz de Waal. Franz spent six years studying chimpanzees in captivity in the Royal Burger Zoo in Arum in the Netherlands. A lot of modern day self-proclaimed alpha males love this research. They love to use it to back up their own theories about how alpha males definitely exist in human societies. There are a few issues with that. For one, this research was done on chimpanzees in captivity, not in the wild. And for two, we're not chimps. Now granted, humans do share an ancient ape-like ancestor with chimps, but that existed about six to seven million years ago. Some of us have moved on. Funnily enough, we also share that ancestor with our closest primate relative, the bonobo. And if you didn't know, in bonobo societies, it's matriarchal, meaning the females are at the top of the food chain. In bonobo societies, Babies eat first, then the females, and then the males eat last. They don't have any form of alpha male in bonobos. But the alpha males of today don't want to talk about that, either because it throws out their whole theory, or because they actually just haven't done any research on the topic whatsoever. But to be fair to the alpha males watching this video, this isn't just a thing that we see in chimpanzees. This has also been observed in wolves. In 1970, David Meech wrote The Wolf, Ecology and Behaviour of an Endangered Species. He observed that wolves have dominant pack leaders, meaning one alpha male as well as one alpha female. But the alpha males of today don't like talking about that bit. David observed that this alpha couple showed clear dominance over the rest of the pack. They were the clear leaders of whatever pack they were in. And alpha males of today love this research. If you've ever seen an alpha male Instagram page, they are obsessed with wolves. The thing is, David was completely wrong. He published an updated paper in 1999, completely retracting all his previous research. He went back to study the same wolves again and realized, hang on a minute, these aren't alphas. These are just the parents. So if you don't know how wolves work, they're quite solitary creatures. When a wolf is old enough, they will leave their own pack and go off to fend for themselves until they find another wolf that they can have cubs with. So there wasn't an alpha male and an alpha female. There was a mam and a dad. Who did you think was going to be in charge? 
David's original book is still in publication today, and he himself has personally written to his own publisher multiple times asking them to stop publishing the book, and they just won't. But hey, nobody ever reads the redactions, do they? Now this is all very niche scientific research. So the average person wasn't reading these when they were originally published. They were either doing a lot of drugs, or hating people that did a lot of drugs. So how did alpha males become the phenomenon that they are today? It's all thanks to a book that came out in 2005. Enter The Game, Penetrating the Secret Society of Pickup Artists, by investigative journalist Neil Strauss. I say investigative journalist because by all accounts apart from himself, he really just wanted to figure out how to sleep with a lot of women, but didn't really want to be associated with pickup artists. I can't imagine why. In the book, Neil uses a warped, bastardized version of the already incorrect alpha male wolf theory to justify sleeping with as many women as possible and manipulating them into having sex. And he learned all this from this man. This man's name is mystery. <laughs> His real name is Eric Van Markovic, but what can I tell you? Women love mystery. Oh brother, this guy stinks! Eric was a failed magician, honestly, same, who became one of the world's most notorious pickup artists. He ran very expensive courses where he would attempt to train the most desperate men on the art of picking up women and Neil became one of his very eager students. This book is also where we get the phrase negging from. If you're not familiar, negging is the act of constantly insulting and berating a woman until she has sex with you. So to any women watching this, is that good advice? When the game came out, it became a cultural phenomenon. It became a bestseller instantly. It was the Bible for a very specific demographic of men. And on top of that, it generated so much outrage that people were buying it just to see how terrible it was. It has sold two and a half million copies. Little Women in 150 years has sold 1.8 million. That seems misogynistic on its own. <laughs> to be fair, it really is the opposite of Little Women. Big men. The game helped to spread a very toxic and misogynistic view on women and relationships in general. It completely objectified women as these things to collect or conquer, instead of, you know, human beings. More and more men started to see the alpha male as something to aspire to. You know, instead of forming a real connection with a human being and bettering yourself as a person. Why do that when you can just manipulate them into having sex with you? More and more men started yearning for the alpha lifestyle and a smaller subset of those men realised, hang on a sec, there's a lot of money in this. And this led to the professional pickup artist boom of the early 2000s. So many men started selling courses to desperate men, teaching them how to pick up women by being the worst kind of person imaginable. There were even TV game shows about pickup artists. If you'd like a more in-depth video on pickup artistry, H Bomber Guy has a fantastic one, and he even put himself through the torture of reading a lot of their self-published books. So give him credit where credit's due, because that must have been awful. But times change and ideas evolve, or in this case, devolve. Nowadays, if you have a message you want to spread to the world, you don't write a book. You don't make a movie. You go to YouTube, baby. So let's do a little bit of role play here. Calm down. Imagine you're 12. You're in school, and all your friends are talking and boasting about all the girls that they kissed over the summer. They're lying by the way, you can relax, you're 12. But you don't know that they're lying, so you start getting worried because you haven't even kissed one girl, and Declan over there kissed 40 girls in one night. That bit is actually true. Legend. So you head home, and you open your laptop, and you go to the same place that any kid goes, 
when they want to learn more about something they heard in school. YouTube. And luckily enough, there are a lot of videos on this topic. So you start scrolling through the page until you find a video that you think you might like and oh what, this one? This one grabbed your attention? Yeah, it's algorithmically designed to grab the attention of people your age. So you click on it. And now you're thinking, well this guy has millions of subscribers and millions of views, so it must be good advice. And then you hear this. The fact that you're watching Alpha M videos gives you a pretty solid foundation if I do say so myself, but keep watching, it'll get better. So if this guy's an alpha male, and he's kissing a lot of girls, So on the female side, you guys can see that most women are competing for the top 20% of men, whereas bottom 80% of men are competing for about the last 20% of females, okay? So the best way to explain this is women are looking for Christian Grey, okay? That's just the reality. There's a reason why the book Fifty Shades of Grey is so popular amongst women. You got a tall, good-looking, rich man, okay, that is dominant and has leadership qualities. These are the attraction triggers that women look for in a mate. But guess what? Unfortunately, only a small percentage of men have these traits. So that's why women are very selective on who they date, hook up with, see, etc. So now that we understand why women mate the way they do and we have an example, we're going to get into some more contemporary studies as to what's going on with the dating marketplace. Yeah, that makes sense because you're 12. Better watch another one. Women live life on easy mode, while men are forced to live life on hard mode. And another one. Now, if she's denying you, she's not open to your advances, well, then, like I say, if she's your wife, then she's in breach of contract. Fellas, I used to be a beta male too. And another one. My mama's a slut, your mama's a slut, my sister's a slut, your sister's a slut. They're all sluts. Oh, I never really thought that about women before. They must all be horrible. And another one, 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 and another one. Jesus, that got out of hand pretty quick there, didn't it? And all this started because this man watched some chimpanzees for a while. Just to give you a bit of a warning, a bit of a heads up. We really only started to scratch the surface of the alpha male phenomenon on YouTube here. It gets a lot worse. Now I think it's very important for us to have a look at these guys, to study them, to see how they really think, so you can understand the kind of stuff that is on YouTube at the moment. Kids are watching this content. So if that's too much for you, I completely understand. No hard feelings if you want to tap out early. If you want something lighter, here's a silly video about monkeys and movies. Where did they go? <laughs> but if you do want to stick around, if you really want to see how bad things get here, strap in. Because it's f If you've decided to stick around, congratulations, you are a true alpha male. I know we've already established that that phrase means nothing, but hey, if these guys can make stuff up, then so can I. So if you're unfamiliar, there is a phenomenon online called the manosphere. This is a term used to encapsulate a broad range of male-orientated, often very misogynistic and anti-feminist content online. The manosphere has a wide range of subcultures in it, and they use pill terminology to identify themselves. You have incel or black pill content. Incel is shorthand for involuntarily celibate. This refers to men and boys who believe they are genetically predisposed to never being capable of being found attractive by a woman, often through their own self-perceived lack of self-esteem. Noah Sampson has a great video on incel content on YouTube and how dangerous it really is, so if you want a more deep dive into that community, have a look at that. There are pills that I can't even name on YouTube, just in case the video gets taken down. It's the or word pill, and this refers to a group of men who genuinely believe that any form of sexual contact with another person has to be without their consent. The Manosphere as a whole often has ties to anti-Semitic groups, white nationalists, alt-right communities, 
They're big fans of transphobia, biphobia, homophobia. They're basically terrified of everything. The most prominent of these pill terminologies you'll see online are red pill and blue pill. I myself would be considered blue pill because I believe that women should have equal rights because they are also human beings. Crazy, I know. Now, the reason all these things are pills, it originally comes from the movie The Matrix, where Neo is given the choice to either take the red pill to leave the Matrix or take the blue pill to stay inside of it. And the Manosphere love pointing at this as to say, Oh, if you believe that women are equal and they should have equal rights, then you are in the Matrix and you need to break out of it. When if you know anything about the movie The Matrix, it was directed by two trans women. They themselves have said that the movie is a trans allegory. But now that they identify as women, their opinion doesn't matter. So today I am solely going to focus on red pill. This is where the majority of alpha males and pickup artists fall into. I think the best way to demonstrate their beliefs is to just let them speak for themselves. Uh, it's more, it's way more important to, to, to protect her than to please her. Who gives a f about a woman to work against? It's useless. First up are fresh and fit. Think zig and zag if instead of entertaining children, they told women that they didn't deserve rights. Very niche Irish joke there, Graham. Good job. That'll do very well globally. Flip and Flop have over 700,000 subscribers on YouTube as of recording this video, so they're doing very well. And on top of that, they have a Patreon with over 2 thousand patrons. Let's just have a quick look at their Patreon to see what they offer people. Fresh and Fit are creating content to help men navigate females, fitness and finances. Why do these alpha guys always have to use the word females? It makes it sound so creepy. All right, let's have a look at their tiers. They have five of them. So for five dollars a month, you get access to content that's not safe for YouTube. To be fair, I didn't think any of their content was safe for YouTube, so you can only imagine what this is. For $20 a month, you get the honor of a discount on their merch store. For an extra $30, $50 a month, you get to ask them one question. And you also get an increase in your merch discount, and on top of that, oh look, you get a merch discount. Very cool guys, well done. Okay, now we're into the big boy money. For $97 a month, you get an exclusive Telegram chat and everything else that already comes with the $50 tier. So you are paying an extra $47 a month to send them a text. To be fair, if it was a real old timey Telegram, that'd probably be worth it. I hate women, stop. And finally, for $2, hundred dollars a month you get to have a zoom call with them and everything else in the lower tiers like i said these guys have over two thousand patrons at the minute over two thousand people are actively paying these men directly every month let's do some quick math here let's let's assume all these people are only paying the lowest tier that's still over $10,000 a month. If they're all paying the highest tier, that's almost $420,000 every single month. There's a lot of money in telling women that you hate them. Man, I am almost tempted to start an alpha male channel just for money, but then, you know, I remember my soul. Phineas and Ferb here mostly focus on reactionary content, stuff that will be very controversial. It will get views, it'll get engagement. And yes, I see the irony of me making a video talking about them, getting more attention on them. But to be fair, I think the clips that I show of them don't really help their case. This is a very unpopular opinion, but I'm going to say it anyway. I think if you're in a serious relationship with a girl, she should not have an Instagram. That's cheating. If you want to actually see the opinions of some women about these guys instead of just watching another white man talk about it. Chad Chad, Anna Marie Fricino, and Tara Mooney all have fantastic videos about these guys. They're very funny. Now, if you're not really into the more energetic vibe of Fresh and Fit, you might prefer the next guy I have for you. The more you see women in government, the closer you are looking to the collapse of that culture.
Elliot Hultz has over 800,000 subscribers as of recording this video. He started his YouTube career as a fitness trainer and he would make fitness videos that genuinely helped people. And now he tells young boys that women are incapable of making their own decisions. It, because what, is, what happens when a woman vote? She diverts in her values from her husband's. What does that do? Splits the family. Elliot is a little different than most alpha male YouTubers in the sense that instead of teaching men to bottle up their emotions, he runs seminars where he teaches them that it's okay to cry. Which when you first hear that you think, that's actually quite good. But in the same seminar he'll teach you how to overanalyze eating a piece of cake. Some things strong men just don't do. Strong men don't eat foods with frosting, especially things with sprinkles. Only weak men sink so low that they lick frosting off cupcakes and donuts, things called ding-dongs and other sweets. Instead, skip dessert. Men don't eat comfort foods, we only eat meat. How insecure are you if you're afraid of eating a bit of frosting? Milk and powdered sugar. You're afraid of milk and powdered sugar. Now if you can't make it to a seminar in person, don't worry. On his website, you can buy his masterclass for $1,000. Well, we have to get the YouTuber package. I mean, hello. No, I'm not going to give this man money. He has more than enough. Some things strong men just don't do. Strong men never cover their nuts when they're standing or demonstrate what's called cock shame. Instead, let your two arms hang down by your side and your third leg swing freely in between. You've probably noticed that a lot of these alpha males have the worst production quality. And they're multi-millionaires. Hire a graphic designer on Fiverr, Jesus Christ. And if you thought Elliot's production quality was bad, allow me to introduce our next man, who goes by Alpha Male Strategies. This guy makes, by far, the lowest effort content I have ever seen on YouTube. And I made sketches on here when I was 14. I've never had this many notes for one topic, guys. I literally got three pieces of paper, papers worth, uh, worth of notes. I think with AMS specifically here, you really start to get a peek inside the much more depressing and sad side of the alpha male lifestyle. The last girlfriend I had, I think I was 28, 28, 29. I think 28. I think that's what it was, 28. Haven't had a girlfriend since then. Have not been in a monogamous relationship since I was 28 years old. So by the time I got 30, love was gone. He really lacks the on-screen presence of a fresh and fit or an Elliot Hulse or some of the other alpha males you may have seen before this video. And because of that, when he expresses his views on women and relationships, it just sounds really sad. Like he always looks like he's about to burst into tears. Maybe we should just get him in touch with Elliot. All right, here's uh, a real big one too, guys. No talking on the phone. What the did I tell you guys about giving women your non-sexual attention? When you talking on the phone, you ain't even touching her or nothing. Can you imagine not wanting to talk to somebody that you're genuinely interested in. This is, this is the confusing thing. So many people are paying this man directly for his advice on women. See guys, you're not fooling women. When you're a woman's friend, she knows what the ultimate goal is. Now that doesn't mean you're at home losing sleep about sleeping with her, but she knows deep down you want to sleep with her. This is an overarching tone across all these alpha males. They genuinely believe that it is impossible for men and women to have non-sexual relationships with each other. Can you imagine not being open to a friendship just because of somebody's genitals? It sounds like they all just have a sex addiction. If you can't look at a woman, if you can't talk to a human being without thinking about f***ing them, you need help. Have you started to notice the pattern with these guys yet? They all seem absolutely convinced that any relationship that they get into is doomed from the start. Unless you're Elliot and you marry a woman and want to take away her right to vote so she has to be completely subservient to you. But that goes under most of the alpha males. It just seems like a very sad way to live your life. So 
why would you continue to live like this? If you haven't realised yet, the answer is pretty obvious. Because these guys don't just make this content because they want to make this content. Every single one of them sells an online course on how to be like them. And they're doing very well. They're making so much money teaching desperate men who already believe this stuff that they are absolutely right to believe this. And look at me, I am a bastion example of why this can lead to success. And there are so many more doing the same thing. One man has even developed an entire pyramid scheme around selling courses to men to teach them how to be horrendous towards women. I have to say allegedly, just in case. Meet Andrew Tate. In my opinion, the worst man on the internet. Girls come to me and go, yeah, I beat it up. I was like, oh yeah, okay, cool. No, I mean it. No, bitch, I mean it. I guarantee I changed the way you look at sex forever. You're gonna be so crying. I won't cry. I bet you cry, bitch. I bet you f***ing cry. You're saying I, I wouldn't cry. You're challenging me to a fight. You're saying I can't hurt you. You're out of your f***ing mind. I don't even have to f*** you. Forget the sex part. That's a distraction. My d*** can stay in my pants. I'll just start beating the shit out of you. How about that? We walk in the bedroom. I start kicking your ass. No sex. No sex involved. But you cry then. If you're on TikTok, you already know who this guy is. You've definitely seen him because there are at least 50,000 different TikTok accounts that just repost his videos over and over again. Andrew Tate is the master of outrage engagement. There's no power in sushi. Food and water is all you put in your body and the idea is that you derive power from it. Look at this power. This, is, this comes from the food I eat. You're telling me you're gonna get power from sushi? A little piece of floppy fish, some rice in a circle, what is wrong with you? So just a little backstory on him. In 2016, he was kicked off the UK version of Big Brother because a video surfaced of him beating a woman with a belt. His Romanian mansion was also recently raided on human trafficking investigations. Andrew himself has said that a big reason he moved to Romania is because the sexual assault laws are much more relaxed and he was less likely to go to prison. Probably 40% of the reason I moved to Romania because in Eastern Europe, none of this garbage flies. If you're gonna go to the police and say he me back in 1988, they're gonna say we should have done something about it then. If you're gonna go to the police and say he me yesterday, say, okay, have you got physical evidence? All right, is there CCTV proof? Where to happen? Okay, let's go interview him right now. And if it wasn't really, Oh, that's like, oh, we went to the club, we got drunk, she agreed to go back to my house, we started having sex, and then we carried on having sex, and then we had sex, and she didn't say anything wrong, and then she texted me afterwards, and I didn't text back, and now she's saying, F her. the police would be like, okay, she's an idiot, bye. This Me Too era bullshit has not protected women, it's just destroyed the safety of men. If you want to be just like Andrew Tay, you can pay him £4,000 to join the War Room, an elite network of men just like him, who will teach you how to be just like them, you know, an individual, just like them. Can you imagine if every man on the earth was like Andrew Tate? We'd be dead in a year. The sushi industry alone would be in ruins. If you haven't noticed already, every single one of these alpha males has made outrage their entire business. And they're actively teaching other people to do the same thing as them. All of these guys have made their fortunes teaching other men that women can't succeed on their own and should be treated like dogs on a platform whose CEO is a woman. But there really is a market for everything. I mean, this has to be a multi-billion dollar industry at this point. So why would they ever stop? There is so much risk involved in any of these guys ever expressing the opinion that they think women should be treated equally. Their entire brand is built around being the most awful way they can be towards women. So if they suddenly say, hey, maybe they're human beings, they lose their brand, they lose their friends, they lose all their businesses, everything is gone. And these guys are just too cowardly to do that. So by their own definition, they're all beta cooks. So let's play devil's advocate here for a second. Let's pretend that they're actually right about everything they say. Alpha males do exist in human societies. And if you remember when I explained how chimpanzees work earlier, 
there can only be one alpha male in each society. And if YouTube as a community is a society, who's it gonna be, guys? Because it can't be all of you, lads. Because if we're going off subscriber count, this kid has you beat by miles. Let's apply the same logic to any of the courses that these guys sell, where they teach you to be an alpha male. If you buy any of these courses, you are joining a community of men who want to be just like the man teaching the course. He is the alpha, so by definition, every single person in that course is a beta male. So please stop paying these men for their awful opinions and awful advice. Do you want a good dating tip? Just be a decent human being, it's not that difficult. Even Neil Strauss, the man that literally wrote the book on being an alpha male, has since rescinded that entire lifestyle. He admitted that he had a sex addiction and realised how toxic the alpha male pickup artist community was, so he stopped. So I'd like to think that if the man who literally wrote the book on it can realise how awful it is, maybe there's a glimmer of hope for all these guys as well. We'll wait and see. I can't imagine this guy being 70 years old and still having these beliefs and being happy. So real quick, there are no such thing as alpha males in humans. These guys have no idea what they're talking about. Just because they have a lot of money doesn't mean their opinions are correct. Look, if, if you genuinely believe that women are evil or less than, or if you genuinely have the opinion that they don't deserve the right to vote, really look inside yourself and try and figure out why you believe that. Is that an opinion that you genuinely came to yourself? Or do you just believe that because a man on the internet told you? I understand the irony, I'm a man on the internet telling you the opposite. So that's why I'm asking you, please do your own research on this stuff before you make up your mind. If you made it all the way through the video, thank you so much. Genuinely, I really appreciate you watching. I think it's important that people see the other side of this kind of content for what it is. If you do want to support me, I'm not going to sell you a course on how to hate women. I think that's kind of f***ed. <laughs> but I have set up a Patreon. So if you'd like to directly support the kind of content I make here, it's over there. It's completely optional. I'm still going to make the content regardless. Best thing you can do for me is like, subscribe, share the video with somebody that you think might be interested in it. Even better, share this video with somebody that you think might be going into the rabbit hole of the alpha male phenomenon on YouTube. Because the sooner you get them out, the easier it'll be. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Hopefully it'll be a little bit lighthearted compared to this one. I'll see you then. Bye.